Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a mid-sized cruise ship owned and operated by MSC Cruise Lines. In this video we'll show you everything that the MSC Poesia has to offer, as well as giving you a tour of our balcony cabin. At the end of the video we'll also show you exactly what we paid for this 9 day cruise around the Baltic. MSC is unapologetically Italian, which can be seen in the decor, food, music offered, as well as the ship names. The Posia is a little over 92,000 tons and has a capacity of 3,200 passengers. Now when comparing the ship to other cruise lines ships of this size, you'll see a drastic difference in passenger capacity. In general, there's less communal space, fewer restaurants, and more compact venues on this ship than on its mainline competitors. Which is probably why they're able to offer cruises at a fraction of the price of the big guys, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Let's start this off with a quick tour around the ship. We'll start way on the top of the ship on deck 16. In the aft of the ship, there's a sports court here. In the front of the ship on this deck is the top 16 exclusive solarium. This solarium is only available to certain guests who have paid for the right to use it. It's really just a private sun deck, but it's nice to have this offered. Going down to deck 15, you'll find a small mini golf horse and a shuffleboard area, as well as other deck games in the aft of the ship. Let's explore deck 14. For most of this deck, you'll find a gangway that connects the front and back of the ship, overlooking the pool area below on deck 13. On the back of the ship, there are tons of sun loungers and space to enjoy the views outside. There's also a small pool area designed for children as well as children's indoor playroom. Closer to the aft of the ship, you'll find the virtual games room, which is basically just a very small arcade. You'll also find the S32 Disco, which turns into a very lively nightclub in the evening. If we take the stairs down to the aft of deck 13, you will find the Villa Pompiana restaurant. This restaurant is the buffet, and it's open for most of the day. There are plenty of different food types offered here, and there is plenty of seating as well. We never had any issues finding a spot to eat here. We will do a different review video on the food of MSC as well as MSC as a cruise line in general, so make sure you watch out for that video. We will say that this is the place that you can get the famous MSC homemade pizza. Moving forward from the buffet, you'll be taken outside of the pool deck. This ship has three main pools and four whirlpools. In the center of the pool deck is the Mojito Bar. Closer to the front of the ship is another bar, the Piranha Bar, with several seats and a great view of the forward part of the pool deck area. Overall, we thought that the pool deck was a decent size for this ship, and it held the pool goers very well throughout our cruise. In the forward part of Deck 13 is the Aurea Spa and Wellness Center. Here you will find a full gym that looks out over the front of the ship, as well as several rooms offering different types of treatments, massages, and beauty packages. You can also visit the salon here, or purchase healthy blended drinks from the bar. Now we'll take the stairs all the way down to Deck 7. In the forward part of Deck 6 and 7 is the Teatro Carlo Felice, the theater on board this ship. This theater, though it looks rather small, actually has a capacity of over 1,200 guests. It's a really great place to take in all of the entertainment offered on board. And this is the first place where you really see how glitzy MSC's decor is. As we've said in our other videos, MSC does tend to be very sparkly. Moving aftward from the theater, you'll find yourself in the Royal Casino. Again, this casino is very well decorated, and there's plenty of machines and table games for guests. You might notice that, because this is an Italian cruise line, the casino is a bit smaller than you might find on American cruise lines. The casino did tend to be fairly empty throughout our cruise. Continuing afterward through the gallery, you'll find the ship's library, where you can sit in comfortable chairs and read one of the many books on board. Right next door is also a card room. Across from the card room and library is Kaito Sushi Bar. Kaito is the only speciality dining venue on board this ship. Speciality dining is an extra pay dining choice available to everyone on the ship, but you should probably make a reservation. 
This restaurant was very good when we ate here during our cruise, and there's tons of options available if you like sushi and other Japanese food. Moving further astern, we find ourselves in the third level of the atrium. This atrium is very beautiful, with a fountain, a backlit wall of water, and a small stage in the middle. In the evenings and throughout the sea days, you can find entertainers here using the stage. On this third level of the atrium, you'll find the Hitchcock Cigar Lounge, one of the few places that smoking's allowed on board. On the other side of the atrium is the Cyber Cafe, a place full of computers and help if you need it with the internet. Also throughout the atrium you can find these payment machines, which you have to use at the beginning of your cruise to set up a payment method for your cruise card. You can also use them to view and pay down your room bill. Continuing on, you'll find yourself in the photo gallery, where there's tons of prints and paintings for sale. You can also commission a photo for yourself to commemorate your cruise here. On the other side of the photo gallery is the Il Grappolo de Oro wine bar. This bar features not only several different types of wines, but also many different types of beers. These wines and beers aren't available anywhere else on the ship, and the selection here was honestly quite impressive. Most of them were even included in our drinks package. In the aft of Deck 7 is the Pajale Lounge, a very large venue where they host music at night, as well as having several games and trivia during the cruise. This was a very large space and had tons of comfortable seating. Now we'll walk down to Deck 6 where you'll find the first of two main dining rooms. This first dining room is the Il Palladio Ristorante. The theme of this dining room seems to be red, and this was our assigned dining room for the duration of our cruise. With MSC, you're assigned a dining room and a table for your entire cruise. Here you'll have the same waiter and table mates during your entire stay. Moving towards the front of the ship, we come back out to the second level of the atrium. Here you can find the MSC Travel Agency which is basically just a place where you can book future cruises and shore excursions. There's also tons of little boutique shops. These shops take up the entire midship of Deck 6. Getting to the forward part of Deck 6, you'll reach the Bar de Poeti, another small lounge with a nice bar and some great music on a night. Walking more forward, you come to the largest lounge on the ship, the Zebra Bar. This venue hosts a huge bar with plenty of specialty cocktails, as well as tons of seating and a large stage. This was a great place to spend an evening, but we couldn't quite figure out why it was called the Zebra Bar. In the Zebra Bar is also this beautiful staircase that leads up to Deck 7 in the casino. Another example of MSC's sparkliness. In the forward part of Deck 6 is the theater. Now we move down to the final deck of our tour, Deck 5. This deck consists of several cabins in the forward part of the ship, as well as the medical center, which luckily we didn't need to visit. At midship, you'll find the lower level of the atrium. This is where you can find guest services and reception. You can also find a nice bar here, the Rendezvous. Here there are plenty more comfortable seats, and bars on both the port and starboard side of the ship. The final venue on this tour is the second main dining room, the Ristorante La Fontane. Like its red counterpart upstairs, this restaurant is another one with assigned seating and dining times. Now that we've taken you through the ship itself, let's walk up to our balcony cabin on Deck 9. This is a tour of room 9173. This balcony cabin is located near the aft of the ship, and it's the first cabin on the outside portion of the frame. We wanted to make sure that we could get both forward and aftward views from our balcony, so we stayed away from the midship, which is sunk in a bit from the hull. Anyway, let's take this tour. Walking into the room, you can see that the doorway is fairly narrow, but it opens up nicely once you get into the bed area. This cabin is fairly wide, though not very deep. 
Overall, the decor in our cabin was very nice. We do have to say that we really did like the overall tone of this room. The wood paneling made it nice and homey, and the decor was subtle, yet it made sure that the room was not just stark white. Right next to the entry, you'll find three closet doors. Two of these doors open to closets with hangers that are full length, perfect for suits and dresses. The last closet door has five drawers and also contains your safe. Walking into the open part of the room, you'll find your bed, which is a decent size and actually very comfortable. On either side of the bed, you'll find a lamp and a small side table. Some cruise lines don't offer these side tables next to each side of the bed anymore, so this was a treat to have. Each side of the bed also has its own light switch for the room. What you won't find on either side of the bed, though, is a USB port or any kind of electrical outlet. The only plugs in the room are right next to the desk. Here you'll find two European and two North American outlets. That's it for electricity in the room. It's not ideal, so we do recommend that you bring some adapters with you so you can make use of the other plugs here as well. Speaking of this desk, there is a small desk in the room with a vanity light and mirror above. There's a small seat by the vanity, but if you were thinking you could sit here and do some work during the day, you'll probably have back issues by the end of it. It's not a comfortable seat. The room also comes with an ice bucket and glasses, as well as a kettle with some coffee and tea, which is actually really nice to have during the cruise, although it did make the desk area very cluttered. In the corner of the room, you'll also find this small chair, as well as a small table. The chair is actually more comfortable than it looks, but again, you won't be spending an entire day sitting here. When it comes to storage in the room, we felt that once you use the drawers and the bedside tables, there's actually a decent amount of space. You'll have 11 medium to small size drawers in the room, as well as a full size closet with plenty of hangers. There are also two drawers that you could use for makeup or anything else in the desk. Opposite of the bed is a small television. There wasn't much in the way of options for TV here, but it was there. Below the TV, in the cabinet, is your refrigerator. This room does have its own thermostat, which was very responsive, and kept the room nice and cool, just how we like it on cruises. Keep in mind though that if you open your balcony door, the climate control system will turn off. So if you like your room cool and you're sailing somewhere warm, it might be best to keep that door closed. Now it's time to take a look at the bathroom. This bathroom overall is an average size for a cruise ship. There is a very nice size vanity with plenty of shelves for toiletries. Overall, the shower was a good size and comparable with most other cruise bathrooms. The shower head is detachable, and there's also little shelves in the shower as well. There are also little dispensers in the shower full of shampoo, conditioner, and body wash if you don't bring your own. The biggest downside of this room is that there is a curtain instead of a glass door on the shower. We absolutely hate this, and we're glad that most ships have phased these curtains out. However, they are still on the Poesia. Bathroom done, we can now take a look at the balcony. One of the great things about cruising on a balcony cabin is that you never miss any of the views. We certainly didn't miss any views on this ceiling. The balcony is a very nice size and comes with two chairs and a small footrest. The balcony was actually very private as well. Our balcony, though, did betray the age of the ship. We had a few rusty areas, and the mats over the drainage port on this balcony were kind of disgusting. Just make sure you wear shoes when you're out on the balcony, which honestly you should probably do anyway. So that does it for the tour of this room. Now you might be asking, what did we pay for our nine day cruise around the Baltic Sea in this balcony cabin? If you've done any research on Baltic cruises with other cruise lines, you might be a bit surprised at the prices that are being charged. They are very expensive. For many of the mainland cruise lines, a cruise in Northern Europe can cost more than $5,000. MSC tends to be one of the cheaper options out here, and it's no wonder considering the high number of people they can squeeze onto this ship. Our nine day Baltic cruise in a balcony cabin on the MSC Poesia, with gratuities and tax included, as well as an Easy Plus drinks package, cost us 1,600 US dollars per person. That's right, we were able to get this cruise for just $3,200. You can see why MSC is considered one of the most cost-effective vacation choices if you're cruising around Europe. So that pretty much does it for our tour of the MSC Poesia and our balcony cabin. We did have a good time on our cruise. The ship is definitely not the largest on the fleet, 
and it certainly doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that you might find on larger, newer ships, but it still was a nice place to spend a nine-day cruise around the Baltic. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.